LeBron James. Scream if you love Psycho. In the Fallout universe, survival often means going to extremes, and a few things embody this more than Psycho, a combat-enhancing drug that is as dangerous as it is effective. First introduced in Fallout 1, Psycho is a military-grade stimulant designed to turn ordinary soldiers into relentless warriors capable of shrugging off pain and charging into battle with unmatched aggression. But how does this fictional drug work, and could something like this exist in the real world? My name is Warm Beef, and I am a second year medical student who loves to play and stream video games. You can catch me live at twitch.tv slash warmbeef. Today, we're going to dive into the real science behind Psycho and explore its possible mechanisms through a lens of real world medicine and pharmacology. According to the official Fallout 2 strategy guide published by Cybex in 1998, the drug was created specifically for military use and worked due to its ability to dampen the effect of higher brain functions. So what exactly are higher brain functions and how does it relate to pain regulation? To put it bluntly, higher brain functions are what make us human. These are advanced abilities of the brain that allow us to think, plan, feel emotions, and make decisions about the things that we do in our day-to-day -day lives. These functions are primarily localized to the cerebral cortex which is just a fancy way of saying the outer part of our brain. The cerebral cortex can be divided into four lobes or areas, the frontal lobe, the parietal lobe, the temporal lobe, and also the occipital lobe. When it comes to pain, the higher centers of our brain play an important role in regulating our perception of pain or how we experience pain. At the end of the day, pain is just an electrical signal produced by nerves, which our brains can dial up or down depending on our situation. It's likely that the drug Psycho has the ability to regulate the activity of three areas in the brain. The first of which is found in the temporal lobe and it's called the amygdala. The amygdala processes our fear and our emotional response to pain. For example, if you were bitten by a wasteland dog and your wound got infected, your amygdala would begin to associate dogs with pain and therefore would increase your fear or alertness around wasteland dogs in the future. In order for Psycho to make its users into relentless warriors, it would likely contain some offshoot of a benzodiazepine such as lorazepam. This class of drugs increases the inhibitory effect of a neurotransmitter called GABA, aka gamma-aminobutyric acid. Neurotransmitters are just small molecules that nerve cells can release to communicate with one another. GABA makes the amygdala less active, which means psycho users won't be scared after getting shot or maimed and would just relentlessly charge into battle without fear or any hesitation. The second area of the brain that psycho likely impacts is associated with the higher brain, but it's actually found in the midbrain and it's called the periaqueductal gray, or PAG for short. The midbrain is located in the brainstem, which is just the part of the brain that connects to our spinal cord. Among its many functions, the periaqueductal gray is responsible for analgesia, or pain relief. It's a part of a descending network of nerve cells that can turn down the dial on pain coming from our peripheral nervous system, which is essentially anything outside of the brain or the spinal cord. When we experience tremendous amounts of pain, like the loss of a limb, a crush injury, or even a bullet wound, the periaqueductal gray activates and it sends signals down the spinal cord to the dorsal horn of the spinal cord, which is where sensory information from our peripheral nervous system enters into the spinal cord. These signals are prevented from going up into the brain, leading to a decreased perception of pain. This means if a psycho user were to step in a bear trap, they likely wouldn't feel a thing. Although the exact mechanism of how the periaqueductal gray works is still being researched today, it is believed that opiates made inside of our body, called endogenous opioids, are released when the periaqueductal gray gets activated. 
It is therefore plausible to assume that cycle also contains some type of opiate like morphine or even fentanyl that has the ability to support the activation of the periaqueductal gray and decrease someone's perception of pain. The only problem with this assumption is that opiates are sedating medications, which means psycho users would become drowsy and not be effective in battle. As a result, there has to be another compound in psycho to potentially counteract and override the sedative effect, which takes us to the last area of the brain psycho is likely to impact, the frontal lobe. The frontal lobe is located just above your eyes, and it plays a huge part in self-control, judgment, emotions, and even muscle control. Psycho users are often reported to be extremely aggressive, hard to control, and at the same time, psycho can speed up one's bodily functions to make them stronger and have more destructive power. One particular substance produced by our body that can mimic this effect is called epinephrine or adrenaline. It's the same substance found inside of an EpiPen that are used to save someone's life from a deadly allergic reaction. Epinephrine is also a neurotransmitter that is released by our sympathetic nervous system, aka the fight or flight response. This part of our nervous system is important for helping us respond to life-threatening situations such as running away from a death claw. When activated, epinephrine is released into our bloodstream from our adrenal glands, which are located just on top of our kidneys. Once inside the bloodstream, it has numerous effects, such as diverting blood away from your digestive organs towards your muscles, making sugar more readily available for muscles, increasing heart rate and the strength of each heartbeat, dilating pupils to allow one to see more of their environment, and opening up your trachea to allow more air to go into your lungs. This all translates to someone being physically ready to fight or run away from a threat, which explains the physical enhancement effects of psycho. At the same time, epinephrine will also make its way into the brain, more specifically the frontal lobe, and it can interfere with the ability of the frontal lobe to function, which means someone's rational thoughts and their ability to be level-headed in situations will decline. It also has the ability to increase alertness, which can counteract the effects of psycho from the opiates themselves. This explains why psycho users are hard to control and may make riskier decisions as a result. A bonus area of the brain that psycho likely impacts is called the mesolimbic pathway in the midbrain. This is an area of the brain that gets activated in response to doing things that are pleasurable, such as eating food, scoring well on a test, sex, and even gaming. When activated, the brain provides a surge of dopamine, which helps to reinforce these behaviors. Dopamine is also a neurotransmitter. This is the reason why people can get addicted to many things in life. Unfortunately, medications or substances can also hijack this pathway, particularly medications or substances that release dopamine, like cocaine and morphine. Because of its addictive nature in game, it is likely that psycho also promotes the release of dopamine in the mesolimbic pathway, leading to crippling addictions that need to be treated by in-game doctors. So that's it. That's how psycho would work in the real world. If you enjoyed this video, please do consider subscribing, leaving a like or comment. It really does help the video get out there. And if you have any suggestions on what other video games you want me to cover the medicine behind, I'm always looking for new inspirations. See you guys in the next one.